Thank you very much for that. I'll just told you that always a bit of a problem for us high challenge types, even in high heels. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Wurundjeri people, pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, recognise that sovereignty was never ceded and this land always was and always will be Wurundjeri land. I'd also like to acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues here tonight. I think there's at least two in the room, so I hope to be here with you. To all of the councillors that are here from a number of different municipalities, it's great to see you here tonight. Uh, to the Metropolitan Transport Forum, tireless advocates to get public transport on the agenda uh, at every election. I commend your work and what you're doing. Uh, Greg, it's quite a journey you're taking in terms of uh, the number of forums that are being undertaken this time around. So uh, more strength to your arm is all I can say. Uh, and it's also good to see the Eastern Transport Coalition here as well uh, behind Peter's count. Uh, uh, they're an organisation that I have a, a great deal of sympathy for and probably a little bit of bias too because I was their chill person for five years when I was in the local government so it's great to see you here as well. Of course it's wonderful to see a room full of community members <coughs> interested in public transport. Uh, we all know that something needs to happen in our city around getting people around in public transport is the obvious answer to that. And if it's not public transport, it's certainly active transport, depending on how far you're going. Lastly, but not least, I'd like to also acknowledge um, the Greens candidate for Box Hill, Sophia Sun at the back. It's lovely to see you. Uh, thank you for coming tonight. And I'd also like to make clear, because there seemed to be a little bit of confusion uh, at one of the forums I spoke at last time, uh, you can vote for me. I am your representative, but I'm your upper house re uh, representative. So uh, fear not, I haven't been placed in here for the Greens to talk instead of our candidate. I actually am one of your candidates. So just to clarify that, so there's no confusion at this particular forum. So in terms of vitals, uh, like the rest of Melbourne's East, it is struggling from traffic on the roads in the morning and afternoon peak, and all of you who drive in this local area will know that. We know that from the most recent census, 64.6 .6 people in Whitehorse get to work by car. 19.4% of you use public transport, which is pretty good because that's more than the average for Melbourne, so that's great. It means that you are very much committed to using public transport in Whitehorse, uh, despite the delays, despite the inconvenience of packed trains, despite buses that don't connect with trains, despite buses that bypass bus stops, they're internally late and sometimes they disappear altogether. Uh, I know uh, the, the ghost smart buses are interesting, they're coming, they're coming, they're on the leaderboard, you can see they're coming and then they disappear altogether. So more strength to your arm to using the, these transport systems because they do come with their challenges the way they are at the moment. I guess what uh, strikes, strikes me is that the response from the Labor and Liberal parties uh, to these statistics is that they're immutable. We can't change that fraction. Uh, in terms of responding to people's need, we get the message that we must build more toll roads. However, we know that that will not fix the problems of getting around and congestion because building more roads encourages people to drive more often. It's been proven by scientific research. It has a name. It's called the law of induced demand. The new road space is built by new, newly generated traffic within a couple of years of any new toll road opening. Uh, it's very well researched. It's very well known. Uh, it happens in cities across the world. Uh, it is worth looking at. And essentially, it's a very easy theory. Build more roads, get more traffic. That's why travel times on CityLink are as slow as they were before CityLink was opened. The only way to reduce congestion on our road network is to invest in public transport and active transport to give people alternatives to driving their cars. Now the Greens have developed comprehensive plans to shift some of the people from cars to public transport to take pressure off our roads and leave more road space for people that have no choice to drive. And include, that includes your local delivery vans and your tradies who of course need roads to get around and do what they need to do. We need to have more frequent train services, a proper bus network that people want to use, 
better pedestrian and cycling infrastructure so people can walk and cycle to the station and other neighbourhood destinations. Of course, the Greens support the redevelopment of Box Hill Station and the bus interchange. Uh, however, I, I would say it needs to coincide with the facilities $1 billion overhaul of the Box Hill Shopping Centre that um, it is really a remarkable opportunity that presents itself in the very near future to get a, an interchange that fits truly suitable for Box Hill. And, and Paul, I, I was reflecting when you talked about um, the Box Hill uh, station and interchange. Uh, I don't actually think it's changed in my years of commuting either, and I reckon I'm a few years older than you. So, uh, yeah, it's well and truly overdue. Uh, in terms of the suburban rail loop, uh, we think that the money should be saved from cancelling the North East Link and the Westgate Tunnel toll road projects and invested into public transport like the suburban rail loop. Uh, you will never have a problem with the Greens supporting public transport initiatives, but in terms of spending uh, those sorts of billions of dollars on toll roads that simply aren't going to solve our congestion problems, that is the wrong way to spend public money, uh, and, and secure a, a future for Melbourne that, that's a livable future, not one where we're locked into road congestion year after year, decade after decade, because it's simply going to impact uh, so much on the productivity of this state, a little alone the lifestyle of the people who are stuck in that traffic. It's going to take time to do that rail loop though, so you really need to think about things that you can do in the near future, things that are achievable in the short term to actually uh, get people moving and particularly across Eastern Metropolitan. Of course that's my focus because it's the electorate I represent. So I'm in the process of developing a rapid bus network across the electorate to alleviate traffic on the roads. We're looking at 11 new rapid bus routes, which will help workers and students get where they need to be. You'll hear more about that uh, as we get closer to election time. I just wanted to talk shortly, because, geez, that bell goes quickly. Uh, uh, of course, the Greens are uh, enormous supporters of active transport uh, in terms of uh, uh, health and wellbeing and what impact on environment, it's great for people to walk and cycle around their communities. Cycling has to be safe. Uh, it was very disappointing I managed to uh, introduce a bill for minimum passing distance for cyclists. Uh, it was wonderful that it actually got voted on in the upper house uh, and, and in fact uh, the Liberal Party did support the Greens in relation to that particular piece of legislation we put up. Sadly, uh, it uh, had a very sudden death when it met the lower house and the Labor Party voted against that. Uh, in terms of cyclists, they're very vulnerable road users. There should be meter mark, matter passing laws for cyclists and uh, it, it didn't happen in that case.